Hey, welcome to the first episode of Color Along. My name is Vitek and I'm on the right in the video here. And my name is Carrie, I'm on the left. And we're both coloring these beautiful totem pieces done by a Nelson artist, Kamala Melzak. Yeah, this uh, piece shows up in our coloring book, Legendary Landscapes, a coloring book journey. And uh, we decided to make this episode here where we both color the piece. And um, you can color along with us as well. Or you could just watch us and, and stare at the beautiful color. <laughs> so there's two totems that show up in this beautiful piece of art. The, the tall one on the right, it's the Thunderbird house post. Yeah, this is um, actually a real totem pole. It's in Stanley Park in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Um, it's like a stunning um, piece. The top of this totem pole is a thunderbird um, and then underneath it is a grizzly bear holding a human. So as you can see, we're both taking uh, radically different approaches to the same piece. Uh, Vitex decided to color the entire sky and um, I'm going in to the sun disk part. And the sun disk is sort of um, an artistic rendition of various um, sort of drum patterns and Haida Gwaii artwork as well. The artist Kamla, she wanted to kind of represent the sun disk in her work and I'm just sort of deciding to use more traditional um, First Nations colors in my piece. Well, Vitek is, I think he'll- I'm going crazy. He'll, um, he's starting off the sky, so. Well, yeah, so far it's, so far it's pretty tame, but we'll see what happens. Um, I'm also using Tombow markers. It looks like Carrie's using Tombow too, right? Yeah, I've, I've flipped the page a few times to see if it bleeds and it's no bleed whatsoever, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah, actually these Tombows are pretty amazing markers. I was able to uh, go over a few layers sometimes and I look at the other side of the page. Oh, and... oh you see me mess up there. Oh. I, I colored that green part, the white part, it's supposed to be... Um, you see there in the, the bottom right? <laughs> I realized that I wasn't supposed to color that part green and you know, as a colorist, you, sometimes you make mistakes, so... Yeah, but, it doesn't match up, I can see that. Yeah, so I was <laughs> like, okay, so I'm gonna, you know, okay. Oh, Vitex going in. I'm going, going crazy, fast. Oh, did you see that? I just like spilled white out all over my drawing. <laughs> Oh my god. Ouch, I hate when that happens, that's really Yeah, bad. so, you know, sometimes when you try to fix things, you make, can make them worse, but I think I can make a save at some point here. I'm just like, ignoring that, you know, blob of white at the moment. <laughs> that is horrible, I saw that and it's just like, oh no. So you're using gel pens here. Yeah, gel pens are pretty versatile. They don't bleed on any of the books and you get very vibrant colors. Oh, I also messed up on the left part there. Remember that white piece that was supposed to, I just colored the whole thing black. You see, I'm just trying to touch up the part, you know, down here. <laughs> I'm trying to touch up the part that I, I colored over black as well. Yeah, the cool thing is even if you mess up here and there, the whole piece sort of pulls together in the end too, right? Like. You can make a mistake here or there, it doesn't really show up after a while. It's the whole effect that matters. Yeah, what I like to do is layer, you know, a bit of... You can use a little bit of, a, I guess, acrylic paint, white acrylic, titanium white to fix it. And then you can layer some, you know, white gel pen on top to like even it out. Yeah, you know, I tried um, those stars there. What I did, I colored the whole sky blue. And then I tried to use a white gel pen on the stars. And if you look at it, they didn't come out as brilliant white as I thought it would, but uh, maybe if I wanted to make them even more brilliant white, I would go over it. Oh, I see. Uh, I'm fixing the bl the black the black lines I went over. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> see, all things. Oh no! Be it looks fine. like it's it almost looks like it's back to a white page. Yeah. 
Like nothing happened at all. So yeah, I think the, the artist of this totem pole that I'm working on right now, um, the Thunderbird post, is uh, Charlie James. He carved the original one. Um, and in Stanley Park, I believe there's a replica up by an artist called Tony Hunt who did a replica after the, the original pole started getting a bit uh, rotten or something. The trick to fixing things with gel pens is that, you know, if you layer a lot of gel pens on, it takes a minute to dry. So, you know, I, oh, I put another layer on, of white on there just to even everything out and... Um, oh, maybe I should have tried two layers on mine. But it can be quite disaster if you smear it because then it's just everywhere again. So just, you know, make sure it's dry before you, you rest your hand on there. Hey, what are you using now? Is that gold? Yeah, I'm using gold jelly rolls. Oh, Which isn't so cool. uh, traditional pigment in uh, Northwest First Nations art. But uh, the uh, Coast Salish, they use yellows, reds, blues, and, and green in their um, their totem painting. However, the Haida, the Haida Gwai are a bit more conservative with their palette. They only use um, they only use, I believe, uh, red, black and green or blue. What about hot pink and purple? <laughs> well, I just went all like 80s or something here. I love the bright colors, so couldn't help myself. I didn't use any sort of proper reference. I just used whatever color looked good to me. You know, I like to contrast um, complementary colors uh, on the color wheel. So if there's a yellow, I would, you know, a yellow or an orange, I would have a purple right beside it. That makes it really pop. Yeah, we have it zoomed out so you can kind of see my progress so far. Um, you can't really see it in this video, but basically I have a habit of kind of getting ADD and wandering away and coming back. So Vitek had to like, cut out all the parts where I had wandered <laughs> away and come back, so he had to make like 30 gazillion edits. I was video. sitting there for like two hours cutting Yeah, out, like, it's all my I'm fault. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, and then she's <laughs> gone again. <laughs> so what I like to do is I like to lay down the darker color first, and then I like to put the gel pen on top. Because if the gel pen can kind of sit on top of the darker pigments, so... If I accidentally go over with the black, then the gold will still be opaque on top of it. So that's what I like to do. Yeah, I should try using more uh, mixed media and coloring. It's actually looks pretty awesome. You, know, you could lay down markers first, and then you can go over it with gel pens or pencil crowns. Using more power, more colors. Um, the, the Tombos I'm using in this are, um, I, I got two packs. One's a dual brush bright palette, um, and then the other one is the grayscale palette. So there's about 18 colors I have there to choose from. So there's two tips to dual brush, right? Yeah, there's a, most of the time I'm using the, the brush tip, which is lets you make really thin little detail segments and also lets you just go at it with a brush. There's a, there's a fine point, but it's... I, I think I used it once or twice in this and that's it. Yeah, see, my gel pen is starting to die. Like, in this piece you can see a lot, a lot of unfortunate accidents starting to happen. So, you know, I sort of abandoned that. <laughs> 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 the brown piece, because I my gel pen had just quit on me and I was like, great. You know, I'm not going to buy an entire new pack just because the brown doesn't work. I, I mean, I barely ever use the brown. You know, I was sort of going for, okay, I'm going to use a brown that looks like maybe the wood. So it's an unpainted part of the the, the Thunderbird house post. I was like... You have to look that up. Yeah, I know. Well, I should know what it is, but I keep on like blanking out when I'm supposed to say what it is. As you can see, the gel pen is still not working. And well, at some point I abandoned it, but not not yet. You know, I'm looking at it, the Thunderbird 
the Thunderbird is at the top, and there's a grizzly bear underneath it, and then it's holding a human. But what is that creature that's like... I guess that's just part of the Thunderbird, but it looks it almost looks like there's a creature on the Thunderbird's chest. But I guess that's just the way it looks. It looks pretty cool, though. Mm-hmm. I like that red that you're adding in there. I'm adding some brown accents around the thing. Two different kinds of browns. So as you can see, you know, I'm using a different pen for the brown now because my gel pen quit. And I found this um, brown marker that was a very kind of close shade to the to gel pen. So I've decided just to start using that instead because, you know, close enough. Mm. No one will know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting how how uh, much time it takes to color some of these. There's so many little patterns. How long did it take us? Like eight hours? Yeah, maybe eight hours spread over two or three days. Yeah, obviously we didn't do it all in one sitting, but it, yeah, it would take about eight hours to color. I know we were page. talking and stuff, and we weren't really like rushing. Yeah, just... we we're like listening to ebooks and stuff. You know, it's a fun activity. Yeah, yeah. I was just checking bleed again because I was like, do these tombos really not bleed? Yeah, I they can't really actually. Don't. Yeah, I can't get them to bleed. I've been I've been trying to get them to go through the page, and they don't. Even the darkest colors. Yeah, black two layers, no bleed whatsoever. I was like, I was using multiple layers at one point. Just can't get it to go through. It's great. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how to um, get Tombo to give us some wholesale markers so we can start some selling them as a bundle along with our book because it works so well. Yeah, they're really good and they're hard to find. Like, you go to the store and. They sold out, just had to look around in multiple stores. Yeah, the awesome thing about Tombos is they really don't bleed on any of the like high quality color books. Like Secret Garden doesn't bleed. Yeah. And I don't think it bleeds on Animal Kingdom either. Yeah, anything with a decent quality paper. Of yeah, course, anything with like 100 pound plus. Of course, Legendary Landscapes, which has the highest quality paper, <laughs> or one of the highest. So I'm just going crazy here, purples, I don't care anymore. <laughs> Purple, pur purple grizzly bear, yellow thunderbird. Uh, it's kind of cool retro looking effect. I love mixing like yellow and purple. Yeah, it's completely unique. I've never seen anyone do a techna color totem. I hope <laughs> it's respectable, like, or respectful. I wonder what they, <laughs> they use to make their colors in the actual totem poles. Oh, they used um, charcoal for the black. They used... Mm, charcoal, mixed with some kind of binder, I'm guessing. Yeah, they used uh, egg and also fish eggs as Whoa. sort of like this fat. Really? Yeah, it was pretty interesting. That's amazing. Yeah, and for so, the white, they used um, calcium carbonate, which is actually chalk. They used natural chalk in, um, in soft white clay called kaolin. That's amazing. Um, kind of reminds me of... Uh, you know, egg would be like gouache almost or something, or tempera, egg, tem egg tempera paint. And then there's oil paints and they use fish oil, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they use, um, they ground out the pigments from minerals, like rocks, brightly colored rocks. And they used uh, oils from salmon eggs to sort of like suspend it and and, and they use the enzymes from human spit to, to use the enzyme from our bodies to help bind the oils and the pigments together. Are so it's serious? some crazy Whoa. like chemical engineering <laughs> happening. That's some crazy chemistry there. That's sweet. Oh, I made a mistake on the sky. I like, there's bushes there at the right. I just made the sky like just cut off the bushes. So I'm going to fix that later. It's really bad. I was like, derp. Yeah, so some of the minerals they use for the black paint, including uh, charred wood, um, and they also used magnetite and graphite for the black. Hmm. The white, as I mentioned before, was used, uh, was created from white clay and also from naturally occurring chalk, hmm. calcium carbonate. And for the green and blue, 
they actually used something called seladonite, seladonite, or seladonite, seladonite. <laughs> okay, we're gonna cut this out. Seladonite. No. This is difficult. Well, you know, chemicals. Yeah, for for Minerals. the longest time, like, okay, so this is what they taught us in school. They taught us that they mixed, you know, copper, native copper with urine to sort of um, oxidize it to create this bright green turquoise paint. But it's actually untrue. Recent research done by Canadian, the Canadian Conser Conservation Institute has shown that there's no copper in these pigments. Really? That they actually used a mineral called selenite. It's, it's this bright blue green mineral. Wow. And they mixed it with fish egg oils and uh, apparently the paint uh, created from seladonite is pretty robust and and uh, they even found it on sort of artifacts that are 400 years old and the paint is still there Holy cow. so it's able to withstand you know I guess hundreds of years of the elements and if it's in a good place Hmm. If it's in a place conducive to it being preserved. That's like oil paints that last for hundreds of years. European. Yeah, it's the same concept. I mean, Europeans used... Um, uh, was it linseed oil? Yeah, they used linseed oil. Yeah. And all those Renaissance paintings and things. Mm -hmm. And they used minerals as well. Yeah, I think for all those colors, they basically, they're, a lot of them are the mineral names too, like aquamarine and ultramarine. See, I'm just sort of outlining this ladybug again because when I use a gel pen, it sort of like comes out faster than you expect it. So I went over the lines, so I drew the lines back in. So yeah, it's fine to color outside the lines. You can draw the lines back with a black gel pen because it goes over most things and then just you know, continue on. So this is my first time, I think, properly trying to use Tombow markers. So I was just, you know, I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just using the colors straight on. So I'm using the jelly roll again for the moon. It's really, um, I guess this video recording doesn't do it much justice. I mean, whenever you try to take a picture of something you did in gel pens, you're like, ah, oh, such disappointment. It doesn't look nearly as good as it, it, it does in real life. You know, it's really glittery. It's really nice, really shiny. And here I'm trying to use uh, Tombow markers to color the moon, except I'm not really experienced. So this is my first time using Tombow markers like VTech and uh, I'm trying to use different grays, except it looks very, like, uneven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still with all the very bright colors. Laying them in. So I'm trying to, like, shade or, or blend the colors using the Tombow. Like, <laughs> Jesus. Look at this disaster happening. <laughs> <laughs> you see, like this- Oh, now you're trying to blend it on the page. I'm just trying Nothing's to, happening. Nothing is happening, like zero <laughs> things. Like I'm just rubbing the paper and the paper is like rolling. So <laughs> you roll up and I'm like, uh, you know, this is like 10 layers when it starts to like degrade and I'm like, forget this. So I sort of abandoned that. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a comedy of errors happening in this piece, but it, you know, it, I have to say, you know, some people, I've seen people in the group say, oh my god, like, can you spot the the thing I messed up here? Well, I would say that most of the time people can't, you know, you could, you could see this, you know, massive <laughs> hemorrhaging of problems in this piece, but <laughs> it still looks good, so it's all good, you know? In my bushes at the bottom, I tried to leave a little bit of light on the top of all the bush shapes, so it looks like they're catching some of the light. So for my piece, I'm just trying to, you know, fill in as many stars as possible with all sorts of different gel pen colors I've decided 
that I want all the colors of the rainbow happening in the stars. So, you know, there's yellow, there's green, there's red, there's gonna be orange, I'm doing orange right now. Let's make it really colorful. Yeah, you're going every single star. Yeah, it's interesting because I get to use different colors. And, and once again, you know, I was doing different zones, careful that my hand wasn't going to rub over any of the places I already been because it's, like I said, gel pens require a minute. And I'm fairly oh. impatient, so I just moved somewhere else to work on something. So Yeah, I hate when the smudge happens. I don't know how to take care of it. You can't really erase them, you can't do it. You just have to go over them with a different color. Actually, you can erase them. Oh, really? Yeah, you just like take a big white eraser. If you smudge gel pen, or it works with gel pen, you can erase it. Mm -hmm. If it's a thin layer of pigment, you can kind of rub it off. Um, I don't know how I know this. I, I, I'm pretty sure I did it before <laughs> at some point, not in this piece, but. Are we just going in with Prismacolors? Yeah, I'm using, um, I sort of uh, tested a lot of different blues and I was trying to figure out, you know, which shade would work. So in this piece, I've used Tombow markers. I've used gel pens extensively. Jelly rolls. Yeah, jelly rolls. And I've decided that, you know, the, the background doesn't have to be even. You know, with the markers and things, it's it's one color. Yeah, me too. I just went all over the whole sky. And it actually gives it some texture. It's kind of cool. It's a handmade type of feel. Pencil crayon is great because you can blend it easily. The only downside is you have to sharpen it. That's why I didn't do any of the spaces around the star because my, my pencil was too blunt, so I just decided to work on a bigger area somewhere else. Getting some more of those bushes done. So why do you, well, how about you let the audience know about Tombow markers, how to use them and stuff? Well, very soon in the video, I think I will have the revelation Eureka moment. So we'll wait a second, see when that happens. Okay, well just let me know. Oh, now here I'm trying to fix the sky mistake. <laughs> so I'm just going over the sky with green, <laughs> hoping that it'll somehow vanish the blue. It didn't work out too well, but it's possible, I think. It looks all right. It looks like it's supposed to be there. <laughs> Just blend it into a little yeah. greenish, greenish blue bush. So as you can see, you know, I'm, this part's quite time consuming with the blue because you have to like go around all the stars. You can't just like, you know, whoosh, fill in the whole zone. Well, that's what I did. <laughs> I just filled everything in. After a, a few stars I did went around and then I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna go over everything with blue. But then I. I couldn't quite get them as, as white as I wanted afterwards, but... You probably could if you put in on like More three layers, layers yeah. of gel pen. Yeah, that, or, that's three layers. Or if I went over with like white paint, then it would work. Yeah, you could use a little brush. Titanium white acrylic would go over anything and then you'd be able to lay down markers or, or gel pens. But I don't, I don't know if pencil crayon would work over acrylic very well. Hmm. That's the only thing that might not work. True, true. Well, if I used a brush, I'd have to have like three, three strands. <laughs> oh, you can take a look at the moon. See, I fixed the moon. How? Because I just abandoned markers on that because it, the shading wouldn't work. And I just used a silver prisma color and I kind of shaded it so it doesn't look terrible. <laughs> so that's what happened. You know, sometimes when things don't work, just use something else. That's it. Some more purples. So I decided to do a glow around the moon. So I'm leaving some white spaces around it. Oh, that's gonna look cool. So 
So I'm going over the blue and making some parts darker so it makes the stars look like they're glowing. Also, if you're watching this video in March, you can have a chance to win some Tombow markers. Uh, we have a contest going on March 2016 uh, until the end of the month. If you color our free page or any page from Legendary Landscapes, you'll be entered into the contest if you uh, post your pictures onto a coloring group on Facebook. So check that out. You know that fiddlehead? There's a fiddlehead, it's a, it's a kind of plant, it's on the bottom there. Uh, on my right side of the screen, it's this curled up one. You know you can eat those. Um, they grow in the springtime, there's a very um, specific time, I think it's in April that they grow. And you can actually harvest them and cook them kind of like spinach. That's a fiddlehead? Yeah, it's a fiddlehead. It looks like a fern, you know? <laughs> well, a fiddlehead is a fern. It's a sort of it edible. is? Yeah. It's oh, like I a, had no idea. Like I, I, I was... think, anyways, it's like an edible fern. Huh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, when I was in Prince Oh, George. so you have a testing page. I'm just trying to figure out what greens are going to look good, so I just use that little piece of paper to test it. I'm shading the, the edges of the bush a lighter color, so it looks like light is hitting it. And I'm probably going to go over that with a dark color. Here I started playing with the blending brush on the right. And I started having a revelation. This is where I had the eureka moment. I was like, holy cow, I can, uh, this is how you use it. I can add other colors with the blending brush. So I started adding some shading to the leaves and they started looking really cool. That looks fantastic, VTech. It's almost like Copics except water-based. Yeah, and yeah. And doesn't bleed. This is, this is what I liked Copics for, but I only had like 18 colors to work with here. And uh, all I did, I took the blending brush and I touched it to the tip of a different marker. So for this, I touched it to the blue marker. And then it took a little bit of that blue pigment onto the brush itself. And then I could paint with it. So this blending brush is really cool. I just, I can pick up any color from any other marker and then just paint with it. So the blending there, brush, there it is, yeah. uh, does it come with all the sets? Yeah, it comes with all if the If you buy a set sets. of 10, then you'll get it. Yeah, nine colored markers are in the set, and the 10th one is the blending brush. It's, I don't know if it's just water or if there's some chemical in there or something, but it works really nice. So now I can just add little highlights of, or little uh, bits of shade here and there. Just touch it to the blue and just go over. I'm just loving this thing now, I'm just going at it. You have the, your um, blue color on your left hand. Yeah. And your blending brush in your right. And it's it's just giving this beautiful kind of in-between blue-green color. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I started using that in a few places because it looked great. So on the left, I am just using Prismacolors. So it's a very much a mixed media piece. So I decided to use some blue green colors. It's nighttime. Filling in the rest of the sky. Tiny bit left. I'm using a bit of Prismacolor to blend, so I put the lightest color on one side and darkest color on the other side, and then I take an in between color and I sort of blend the two together, starting from like the base of the light side and I go into the dark patch.
Ah, the fun part. Killing this sun disk. So you can see I just used the color notepad again to test the colors before using them. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, I always have one of those. It's really useful. Yeah, I was using one on the side myself too, just to make sure I got the right color. So I'm doing the light part all the way up. And I just sort of scribble all over the leaf and <laughs> not really... Well, I'm just trying to follow the line. But you know, if it goes over and in outside of the lines, it's fine because it just nicely blends into the colors around it anyways. That's what Prismacolors, you're not too worried about laying too many pigments down that go over the other pigments. So you're not too worried about co covering the black lines like you would when you're using a gel pen or something like that. Definitely more precision required. So I'm using this light color and now I'm using this sort of this brighter lime green color to kind of follow up with the lighter color. So my strategy for the leaves was, okay, I'm going to use all the light colors. And then I'm going to use a medium color here. And I'm going to use the lightest color and I'm going to blend them together. So there's three colors in the leaves. I'm trying to contrast dark and light. Put two darks beside each other, they kind of blend together too much. The eyes. See, I'm not too worried about going over the lines because if it blends with the sky a little bit, that's all right because it's worse to have like white gaps between the leaves and the sky than to have, you know, slightly outside the lines because it's not as noticeable. So again, in my coloring, I'm, I'm, oh, I made a mistake, horrific mistake right there. I think I shook my hand or something, went outside the line. Oh. You think that's a bad mistake? <laughs> you see the part where I spilled like white out over like three yeah, centimeters yeah. over the entire thing? Oh well. But yeah, like, like I said about the complementary colors before, you know, alternating purples and yellows or purples and oranges really sort of, since they're on the opposite ends of the color wheel, they're so radically different that they kind of make the piece look very vibrant. I like the colors you use, they're really different. I mean, I haven't seen anyone approach that piece in the same way you did in any of the groups. Yeah, I went in here with hot pink for the ladybug. Actually, we both used pink for the ladybug, but mine was closer to red color. Yeah, so I thought the, for some reason, I thought the spots were white and I just left it. Red legs. Yeah, it's funny because the ladybug spots are actually... Oh, you did this cute eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit of light. A little bit of shading with the gray. So you shaded the gray over the color. Yeah, just add, add the gray over the color in it. It actually looks really good when you do it that way. It's Thanks. pretty easy. Ah, I found the way to do the moon now. <laughs> Using... This is how you do the moon <laughs> after you saw it, like yeah. how not to do the moon yeah. thing with its horrific like had an advantage there. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get very light lens, which is great because all the colors I had were pretty vibrant. So that looks great. I like I like the color of the moon. You know, you have this smooth color, unlike mine. Mine was like lines, lines everywhere. Yeah. I just uh, mix a bit of gray and blue. It wasn't different. Yeah, in this piece, I learned that if I mess something up with marker, it's fine because you can actually use Prismacolor to go over it a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Unless it's really dark. If it's too dark, then it's like white out time. Mm -hmm. 
I went out over the stars again because I wanted to get them a little brighter. Use Prisma colors, that's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work too well, but. Yeah, it did something. In the end, it looks pretty good. You're just filling up, finishing up with the leaves there too. Right? <laughs> you're just like, I think I'm just showing off my piece now. Yeah, you're just showing off the piece. I'm just taking Still forever because I'm rushing to finish. Three colors to do my leaves. I'm just keep kicking back. <laughs> you're uh, just floating around like. Oh, there's, oh, there's. oh. and there it is. Finn. So I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Color Along. It's our first time doing something like this. Yeah, I hope you learned um, some techniques today. At least you could learn from our mistakes. <laughs> yeah. You saw what happened. The, the white of spilling, the, the incompetence with Tabo, <laughs> the, the general, the quitting of the gel pens. And you know, many things can go wrong when you're trying to color a piece. However, you know, stick with it and Use a white gel pen to fix errors or white outs or even acrylic paints. So uh, just let us know uh, what you think of this episode. We'd love to hear your feedback. Um, we'd really love it if you subscribed because we're going to keep posting here. And we're definitely going to focus more on tutorial videos in the coming months, I think. Yeah. People really like that. It's really helpful. Yeah, then maybe some drawing videos too. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll post some tutorials and techniques and yeah, let us know what you'd like yeah. to see, what you thought of the episode, if you like the format of the split screen. Yeah, let us know if it's like too long or not. I mean, we were hoping people would color along with us and listen to our random ramblings and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Alright, bye for now.